After Jesus had fed the five thousand men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When St. Augustine spoke, he remembered the martyrs. Not so long ago, there had still been dozens and even hundreds of martyrs. The persecution of Diocletian, shortly before Constantine came to power and gave freedom to Christians. When St. Augustine spoke of the martyrs, he said it was an exchange of thanksgiving. The early church insisted it presented to Christians and new Christians. To those who were going to be baptized, it presented the love of God going to the extreme of death on the cross. It was the basis of Christian preaching. God loves you. Look how much he loves you. God loves you to this extreme point. Jesus says it. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son for the redemption of the world. But this can be used as if someone gives you a gift that you think you deserve and you do not have to give anything back or at most a polite thank you. Or it can be used as a motivation to return love to the one who has given you so much love. Being aware that the one who gives you love is everything and you are nothing. The greater the one who helps you, the more merit it has on his path to help you and the more gratitude you have to give him back. Never the same because he is God, but at least all that he can give you back. All the Christian spirituality of the first centuries was based on gratitude in the Eucharist. Everything. It is from gratitude, from that motivation of gratitude that those people who face martyrdom have. It is from there and out of gratitude to the God who has given his life for you that you are able to give. With God's grace, you are able to accept to give your life for him. And giving your life was the extreme. But there were many other consequences of being a Christian. Marginalization loss of property, sometimes even loss of freedom. But being aware of what God has done for you, you have to be willing and prepared to do the same for him, even if later. In reality, you do not go to that extreme because they do not ask you to. Nor were all the Christians killed because there would not have been any left. This is what Jesus says in today's Gospel. When he says, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you have seen signs, but because you have eaten bread to your fill. Why do we seek Christ? For the material gifts of Christ? Labor not for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. Do not seek Christ for the material gifts of Christ. In that case, we have never understood what Christianity means. Christianity, the Christian response, is either thankfulness or it is not, because fear, a response to God based on fear, all religions had it, and certainly Judaism had it. 
An answer to God based on an interest in things on earth or in eternal life was found in all religions. Jesus Christ has not come to make us more afraid or to tell us that he promises us a more splendid heaven with those blonde Valkyries of the Vikings or the brown Huris of the Muslims. If there is no gratitude, that is, if our motivation is not after the surprise of feeling loved by an all-powerful God who becomes man and dies on the cross. If our response is not after that surprise to fall on our knees and say, Thank you, count on me. I ask for your help because I am a coward and a sinner. But count on me to do everything I can for you because it is what I must do. It is what you deserve. This was the response of the first Christians. If our response is not this, we will listen to these words of Jesus. Truly I tell you, you seek me not because you have seen signs, but because you have eaten bread to your heart's content. It is material things that move us. What do you look for when you come to God? What do you look for when you get more money? What do you look for when you get more health? What do you look for when you get more prosperity for you and your family? That is to say, when you approach God, do it out of love for him, out of gratitude to him who has given his life for you. And no one has greater love than Christ had for us, even if he cured us of cancer, even if he made us all multimillionaires, even if we were always young, always rich, always, I do not know what and I do not know how many. It would not be as great as the love of Christ manifested in his surrender on the cross for us. God grant that we may understand and live it. Amen.